What up, oh, everyone? Sure. We are live and back with <laughs> our live. perspectives. Uh, my name is Holden Stefan Roy. We got Sarah Kana in the house tonight. We got Flacco Bale rocking his earth tones. That's all. I think a lot about earth tones in the last while. I'm not even going to lie. Senior earth tones. Never really thought about earth tones until somebody mentioned it. <laughs> Um, shout out progress Actually, anyone in the, the comments coming through progress anyone in the, in the comments already talking starting, about starting starting getting it provocative so y'all can come through provocative we already started Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we for all watching this in the future, come through twitch.tv slash behind that suit for the live Monday, 7 p.m. Or you can watch it on the Twitter spaces. Shout out everybody over there. Follow at perspectives on Twitter. Join the conversation. Be part of the community. What up, Chris Chrome? That man does a lot for us. He is our thumbnail guy. That's right. Chris, Chris Chrome, Chrome be doing up? all them thumbnails. Um so yeah, yeah welcome back. Thumbnails. Shout out to everybody too. tuning in. He does. He does. He edit videos. And he's he's videos. a yes. big part of the success of everything we have. Um, he was actually sad at one point when he stopped editing videos because things were live or whatever. And he's like, "I'm not editing anymore." Nah, but like Chris is part of the team. He's been he's been with it forever. Uh, and if you want to support right. all of us, Patreon.com/slash/Perspectives, P R S P C T V S, and you can hit a Flacco on the cash app, and he'll be your best friend. That's a fact. Um, with that being said, we like to start off our um, episodes talking about the last week, recapping where we're at. So, Sarah, tell us what you've been up to. Also, feel free to tell us in the comments what you've been up to. Word. So, you know, my weekend was dope. You know what I'm saying? I ain't do shit, bro. I ain't do shit. I smoked. I wrote some bars. And hey. I finally took this weekend. I mean, I did do some shit, but that's too personal to say, you know what I'm saying, out loud. But it was a moment where I got to have for myself. Do you know that moment is very precious? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody around you. You can watch it, your shit, or do whatever the fuck you want, scratch your balls all day. It was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. And that, my friend, is how a fucking weekend should be. What about you, Flacco? Um, went out to the bar both both nights. Just hung out with the fellas and had a good time. Low key, hung out. Really with didn't them. do much. Yeah, hung out with the with the Yankee squad. Um, nice. And then today, starting to get ready for the studio this week. We we'll talk about that later. Lit. I went right. to the studio uh, and laid down the last vocals I have to lay down for my next little project coming. I still need to nice. get a features vocals, but I'm done. I'm out. I'm finished my recording parts, which I, I'm, that's my favorite is being done with the studio. It's not my favorite part of the process. Um, then on Sunday, because uh, the rest of the week was whatever, I was recovering. I played video games. I streamed twice this week playing Cyberpunk. It was real fun. I am really enjoying the new expansion. Finally got to it. So yeah. shout out Phantom Liberty for being dope. Idris Elba is entertaining in this video game. I like the way he... They put Idris act. Elba in the video game? That's fire. Yeah. So you have him and Keanu Reeves kind of doing Call of Duty their things. Has? Call no. of Duty has Nicki Minaj and Call of Duty has Snoop Dogg. That's hard. What, wait, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? Idris Elba and uh, Keanu. That's it, that's it. But it's just so Elba's playing a, a spy, Keanu's and that's pretty it, fucking Keanu's hard because he's kind of James Bond Keanu's up in this shit. One. It on. is. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty I lit. It's like, Keanu. yo, Deadass Cyberpunk is like a fire movie where you get to shoot shit in the middle. Like, that's really what you're doing with it. But either way, um, Sunday I then ended up doing this show thing where it wasn't really a concert. We were filming for a documentary. So it was like a bunch of concert footage that is going to be spliced into this thing where we then do like a second part of filming that's more of a roundtable discussion and try to turn that into a resource to help the younger people in Montreal and other parts of Canada better understand the music game from our perspectives as varying degrees of independent artistries. So that turned out to be a lot cooler than I thought it was. I just thought I was going to rap and I was like, oh shit, we're being part of something? That's lit. 
and uh it was, it was different right because like you're filming anyway i know we're gonna move on but you're like you're not doing a show you're filming for a production so between all the sets you're miking up and all this extra shit that isn't how a show normally goes but it otherwise felt like a show it was a cool night anyway oh. and then yeah today was a weird day but uh we're here and we're ready to go so that's what's yeah. up we're ready man to go. That's what's up. I'm I'm glad, you know, you got to do that. I used to be on TV years ago, so I know what that feels like, but we won't talk about that. It's uh it's cool to be part of building culture in your city. You know, like to, to mm-hmm. be part of things that are productive and provide value to people beyond what you know. I like that shit. I like that shit a lot more than like, you know, just rapping at shows. Like to be part of something is cool. Right. Shout out to Nems, Gorilla Nems. This is <coughs> this is his line. <coughs> Coney Island Jesus. Shout out to our brother Nems. Go support that. He got a store, Coney Island. Make sure you support the podcast, the store, the album. Follow him everywhere. That's the bro, bro. And shout out to EO Dub who got the World Finals coming out. This, this is coming up. Yeah, it's November fourth. Um, cool. I guess we can get in. So. We can get into the topics then of the week. Sports time. Mm. Right. Run run down the sports for us, Sarah. So I'm going to keep it real. There's only one sports right now to talk about. There's only one that had wild drama. There's only one. You know which one I'm talking about? If you don't know which one I'm talking about. This is a lie, Sarah. This is a lie. There was wild drama in football this weekend. So you say football. So go ahead. What happened in football? I don't know. I just know that niggas was in my timeline talking crazy all fucking week. They were just talking about the plays. That's it. Word. Word. They were talking about Sarah's the plays. Like, Sarah's like, it doesn't equal up to this real shit. It don't equal up to the real drama. I mean, you know, I do. I, I say the plays, too, when I'm watching F1. I'm like, oh, shit, Hamilton overtook. You know what I mean? But, yeah, so before we get to that, shout out to the the, mm, the Charlotte Hornets, y'all. I, I believe in y'all. LaMelo Ball. I believe in y'all. Okay, Miles Bridges is back. <laughs> Terry Rose is on deck. <laughs> Listen, I believe in y'all. Don't do us like the Knicks did us for years. <clears throat> Make sure. That you do everything different than the Knicks. So when your coach points and says, look, you see that? We're not doing that. You're not doing that. And then LaMelo got to be able to do whatever the fuck you want. So make sure that happens. Shout out to the Knicks, though. They got a younger team this season. The preseason's looking cute. You know everybody fucks up this season. Because this is where you can do whatever you want season in basketball. You know what I'm saying? But I will say, shout out. Shout out to the Giants, because I know you said the football fan. That's what they was going crazy for. The Giants had an amazing game, and they won. Shout out. Let's go, Jets. I don't know what y'all doing out here in these streets, but you're going to have to step that up, too. I can't speak about no other teams. I, don't, I ain't from no other city. <laughs> I'm going to talk about no other team. Okay. <laughs> now, finally, Formula One. Now, Formula One's new show is on, well, the new show. It should be coming on Netflix very shortly because the season now is going to start being over by November. However, how fucking it ever. Airs, it airs usually somewhere between January and March. I forget yeah. when. So this season, y'all better buckle up because they had drama. Every like the, the cars were, were fucking up. So the drivers was beefing with the managers. The managers were beefing with the managers. The managers was beefing with the vendors. And then the drivers almost had beef. So that was great. But shout out to Ricardo. Daniel Ricardo had a great race. He, you know, he he was in 12, you know, 11, 12th place. But you know, it's the first Grand Prix since he'd been back, since he broke his hand and shit and had surgery. So shout out to him. Um, but we gotta talk about the disrespect. Okay. We're gonna talk about the disrespect. Crossing the first turn, right? Crossing the first turn. When they make that first turn, it's a disrespectful first turn. So every first turn will determine who's going to take that front seat. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So anyway, we get to this front turn. By the time you got to the 16th turn, it was only three on deck. You had Max Verstappen. Goddamn Max Verstappen. Lewis motherfucking Hamilton. And then 
the young boy, Lando Norris. I got love for that kid, Lando Norris. The young dude, I got him. However, how motherfucking ever? Because of F1 rules. F1 changes the rules every fucking race. If you don't fucking know that, they change shit every race. So because of F1 motherfucking (laughs) rules, they told them on this particular race, you can't be any lower to the floor. If we find skid marks, you're fucked. So guess what happens? Lewis Hamilton is no longer the number two. He didn't get the number two podium. He was stripped of the podium and disqualified from this race because him and Ferrari had skid marks on the floor now if you watch they are jumping up and down so each car is going to end up these random rules that they just are arbitrary disrespectful as rules bro it's like every race you're going to notice it however this is going to be dope to see how it unfolds on netflix this season but you know make sure you look for ricardo cursing people out you got hamilton calmly and condescendingly because champions don't scream cursing people out you know what I'm saying, your man? Yeah. Uh, uh, Rich, Lewis, Lewis Hamilton, Lewis is, though? I mean, Lewis Hamilton is wild. I'm mad at Richard Lewis. Uh, Lewis Hamilton is wild, calm about his But he shit. was disrespectful. Like, like this even, when he, even when he gets crazy, it's like he just says a crazy sentence with words. But he doesn't say it loudly or, like, out of... He says it uh, like it's a fashion statement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like he'll just yeah, be like, well, he, I mean, he'll he, he'll be like, well, I mean, just because your mother was a whore doesn't mean that she meant to win. So nice, you know what I mean? too. So nice. It's just like, what did you just You're say, right. sir? What? But he did do what? some asshole shit that I was very impressed with. As he was going by Ferrari, he knew that they were trying to pass him, so he did some dickhead shit and slowed up a little bit to make them feel like they were about to pass him. And then it was like he put the pedal to the metal, was like psych, and sped the fuck off. It was great. Everybody was like, whoa, that was some asshole shit, Hamilton. Then, But I, I respect it. seeing how they depicted on this season. Coming I out. respect. I respect it. And yeah, that's your sports right now. I want all that other shit. You want all that other shit? That's what you got the ESPN app. So go to your ESPN app to see all that other shit. I'm giving you right. F1, NBA. I possibly may give you wrestling. And I may give you football, too. It depends. Any so what she's rap saying is you ain't ever oh, going to hear no rap, hockey. Battle rap, battle rap, battle rap, now. Only battle rap shit I know is New Jersey Twerk is going to battle Jazz the Rapper and it's going to be on Caffeine. Shout out to Emerson Kennedy. That's his new thing. They got some things going on over there. So definitely look out for that. And shout out to everybody that probably did have battles this weekend, but I was busier than them. And y'all didn't send me no notes. I only watch when y'all send me them. That's it. Fair. There you go. So now you know. You got to send Sarah them links. It's just the send rules. Sarah them links. It's the rules. I'm right. not talking about your shit. It's the rules. <laughs> um, so current events. Uh, are we gonna talk about the Israel Palestine rally? I think we should. That's a pretty good topic to cover on a new show. Um, yeah. Uh, Lotus isn't here this week. That that uh, super shouts out to Lotus. Um, yeah. But I figured since she usually covers world news, I should put a world news topic in there. So. Nah, it's a good one. I think it's important to talk about the stuff. I forgot to load up the browser. Getting it. Jesus Christ. Hold it's all right. We, ex- we, we learned together. Me. Wrong video. Fuck. Now, ahead of there the we expected are. ground invasion, there were widespread yeah, that? pro-Palestinian rallies around the world today. From Chile to Indonesia, Ecuador, and Brazil. Hundreds of thousands sent a message to stop the bloodshed. In the United States, no different. Houston, Atlanta, even in our nation's capital, they all saw major demonstrations. Here at home, a huge rally in Brooklyn lasted for hours, and we followed the demonstrators as the day gave way to night. As Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Carlo shows us, the mostly peaceful scenes ended with clashes and several arrests. Oh like he was dropping a car. Chaos and clashing at nightfall on the streets of Brooklyn. Police say more than a dozen people arrested during a pro-Palestinian demonstration. NYPD cops pushing protesters back and ordering them out of the roadway. The rally continuing into the night with tensions eventually flaring between cops and demonstrators. And that was not all that flared. The protests starting hours earlier Saturday and much more peaceful, with thousands taking to the streets of Bay Ridge, many marching for a ceasefire in the Middle East. I want peace, and I think there's ways for parties to get through it through violence instead of killing each other. 
As Israel intensifies its war against Hamas by stepping up airstrikes in Gaza, the death toll increases and desperately needed aid just starts to trickle in for Palestinian civilians. Here at home, empathy <coughs> spills into the streets. A Pakistani Muslim. Just treat the Palestinians as humans. They deserve every human right as any other civilian, so that's all. Just treat a human like a human, that's all we're asking for. Israel has all of the resources and power to go against Palestine. They're left with way less resources. There's been way more deaths on the Palestinian side. It's not a symmetrical situation. And with no immediate end in sight for the bloodshed, there seems to be no immediate end to the demonstrations either. I just want peace. I just know innocent lives should be killed. Whether it's Israeli and Palestinian, nobody deserves to die. Anthony Carlo, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And be sure to stay with Eyewitness News as we track and cover every development in this conflict. You can see the update. All right. Um, yeah, man, there's, listen, there's been a lot of, like, it, it's upsetting. It looks, it looks, it's, it's pretty obvious to everyone around the world that it's like, yo, Palestine is, is disenfranchised people. And so disenfranchised people from around the world all kind of like see kinship with them. Then you have Amy Schumer making comments on behalf of Israel. And that doesn't work too. Like, I don't think they, they do their history. I don't think they understand. Oh man. Did we, did we talk about Amy Schumer last week? We did not. I don't know what Amy Schumer said. I tried to hold it in the hold middle it. of your rants. Google, 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 Google that real quick. Google I will. Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer, Israel, Palestine. Amy Schumer. Israel Post. Post Amy Schumer Instagram is getting story. canceled. Share share with the people so that they can see what you're looking at. Yeah, um, give me a second. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give a, a synopsis of what it was that happened. She posted an IG story. With the um, an Islamic jihad with, missile killed hundreds of innocent Palestinians in a hospital in Gaza. Many Western outlets published a propaganda lie blaming Israel without fact checking. Facts only reached a headlines an hour later. Fire the BBC News, etc. Editors who put terrorists down as strong uh, on their homepage lies that stroke anti Jewish hatred worldwide. Hold media prejudice accountable. That's a stupid then post. She, then she posted uh like a meme of like the star of david and in star inside the star of david there was some caption that was like um first they came for the lgbtq community oh, stop. she didn't and i stood yeah look up that one um uh maybe it's a pop-up in here nah oh man um it was like uh oh this there it is this must be what you mean first they came for the lgbqt and i stood up because love is love then they came for the immigrants and i stood up because families belong together then they came Put for the black the community and i stood it. up because black lives matter and yeah and then then they came for me but i stood alone because i am a jew Mm -mm -mm. Girl, y'all need to, y'all fuck. Shit like that is what makes like for Israel not to look good. Like yo, when your representatives are like out of <clears> touch, <throat> privileged white folk that are like totally missing the like everybody's accused her of like everything from like uh, white tears to crying reverse racism. To, um, uh, uh, and then everybody also ended up pointing out the fact that for years, Amy Schumer has done nothing but benefit off of racist jokes on black people, racist jokes on all sorts of people. And now you want to make yourself been getting out away to with be that some, for years. Yeah. And, and now you want to make yourself out to be some sort of like philanthropic hero or some sort. Like what? Like you're insane. I mean, it's just a weird stance. Also, the progress, anyone. It sounds like she flipped that. Like, first they came for the communists, and I did not speak out thing into like the opposite. And like, it sounds like she did a flip on that shit. And like, so the day would be like the general masses. So like, kind of based on that original quote, the media corp, everybody kind of slowly took away your rights. Because at a certain point, you know, right. the U.S. government was going after like anybody that spoke for the left, right? Like. This is back in the 30s and shit. Um, but like, uh, so she seems to be, I don't know, the stance bothers me because it's like, like, I don't, I don't know. The news was covered poorly. It, in my opinion, they, they always cover it poorly in this type of shit because they're trying to get it out fast. Fine. But like, 
to try to make it sound like an anti-Semitic attack is fucking weird. Because, like, there is anti-Semitic attacks that are going to happen because of this shit, and it has happened. And this right. just takes away from that side of it, too. Like Same as that there were... Same as there were going to be bound to be attacks on Asians during coronavirus when, exactly. when you had when you had right wing media going crazy and attacking Asia. But it really wasn't as crazy as people made it seem like even in New York City, where it was like, oh, there's a lot of cases of it. And it's like, yeah, there's like 20 cases. But for a city of millions of people, that is still a really low number. Like I saw um there there was a news thing uh, it's more segue. there was a there was a news coverage of like somebody covering uh all the fare evasion at Times Square station and there were 83 for the day. And it's like that's light. What do you mean? That's a station that hundreds of thousands of people come through every day. It's actually kind of crazy. 80, you you'd, you'd figure New Yorkers would be more people, criminal about it. <laughs> If there's only 83 people evading the fair, like the city, the MTA is getting away, like they're winning, like while people, that means most people are paying. So like, what are you complaining about? It's like complaining about a well, kid that steals a chocolate. So basically, store, like, in, yeah. in defense of the people complaining, it's relative rates, right? Like they're usually mad because in a given area, the number of attacks triples or some shit like that in these instances, yes. which is a concerning thing. And like... Yo, hate is hate. So any hate given attack is, to me is just what it is. Um, I just think like a lot of times certain people will posture for Israel and it's weird. Like, like I don't, I don't know why. Those are people that don't know, you know, the background, how it began. These are people that are not doing their. You know, I I don't even think that's true. I think they're people like you know when you go to church. And, like, how church people indoctrinate you with, like, these scripts of, like, how to justify certain Christian shit um, or Catholic right. shit. I think it's more like that. Okay? Like, I think it's more like you grow up in your home and you see this shit happening. And over time, your families and shit rationalize it. However, like, I'm Jewish, but I'm not Jewish like that. But I see how, like, if you got family in Israel, it becomes a lot different than if, like, you're just kind of disconnected from it. And I'm not yeah, saying anyone's I mean, right about it, but there is a level of like, yo, I'm sure that your cousins are getting their news from Israel. And like when you go there and you see the news and shit, like it doesn't feel the same as like when you're in Canada seeing it. So you got a bunch of people who are getting fed information from back home, whatever the source may be. And on both sides. And I think it is absolutely the Netanyahu government is fucking deplorable. And like everything about the situation is is really bad. Like it's 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 bad. Really bad. And like you um, can see it. Progress. Anyone know. said it's, it's in disgusting. the comments in the comments. Progress. Anyone said the pro-Israel people never mentioned the occupation. They don't. Um, and and it's true. When we covered last week, that's why I think that that video. I didn't really have much to say after we aired that video because. The video says it all. You know what I mean? Like, right. this, this is like, and it's not to say, it's not to, like, the video that we just aired of the protest, the young lady that was like, look, we just want you to treat humans like fucking humans. I don't want nobody like, to die on any and side. Like, and that's it. You, it's one of those very cut and dry, like, nobody wants people dying on Israel's side. But what is being brought up is like Israel needs to stop having uh, been bullying and taking land and killing and <laughs> all these killing videos come and more you know killing I mean? and more killing. And like, yo, you can't you can't beat people up. And then when they finally stand up for themselves, be like, look, 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 like, bro, chill. We all know what's been happening. Everything needs to there needs to be more standing up to the Israeli government on America's behalf and they can't right. keep <clears throat> on just feeding them weapons to then you know uh, discriminate against a whole group of people you know but then again and, America does it to black people here in America even just, so just to just to like play all the devil's advocates are... even 
Even if Hamas is completely funded by foreign governments and in theory could take all the money and deal with the ecosystems and infrastructures, that there's still an, there's still an area under Israeli control where Israel still controls the power switch. And unfortunately, say they did build the ecosystem, there's no guarantees in life depending on what governments and power is what we've all come to see. Right. So why would Hamas just have faith or people have faith that Israel is just going to play nice if Hamas invests nicely in the ecosystem? And I'm not justifying Hamas's actions. I'm just saying a lot of people use that argument. So I just felt like if we're going to cover it fairly, it's worth bringing it up just so people see that shit. But like, it's also a weird argument because it doesn't change the power dynamic of the situation. And the fact that the entire area is walled off and people aren't really allowed in or out without permission. Like that's imagine you can't leave your province without permission or state. You guys have states, you know, without yeah. permission. Like, you know, like I seen how people reacted crazy. to this idea of fifteen minute cities and how much everyone people was freaking didn't out. like people didn't like having to stay home during uh, COVID. Um yeah, progress that, anyone that said it's the hockey Progress that it's fifty six years. Um, it's the it's the it's the occupation. It's violent by definition. Um, I think that we've touched on all the things. I don't want us yeah. to spend the whole episode on it. Um, That's fair. Moving on to the next episode, next topic. Um, SAG AFTRA clarifies Halloween costume rule. Halloween costume rule. Wait. As in, oh, as in rule. Right yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, the Actors Guild people, people, right? Sag, Sag after. Let, 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 me, let me hear this bullshit. Let me hear this. After has clarified let me hear this widely discussed bullshit. Halloween costume rules for striking actors. Last week, the union released a memo setting rather rigid guidelines around Sag after members participating in Halloween festivities, stating that the actors should not wear costumes from struck content, i.e., movie or television characters, and rather stick to generic costume ideas such as a ghost, zombie, or spider. But late Friday, the Guild sent the following explanation, which read in part, This was meant to help actors and content creators avoid promoting struck work, and it is the latest in a series of guidelines we have issued. It does not apply to anyone's kids. We are on strike for important reasons and have been for nearly 100 days. Our number one priority remains getting the studios back to the negotiating table so that we can get a fair deal for our members and finally put our industry back to work. The clarification follows many in Hollywood firing back at the protocol. After the initial guidelines were released, Ryan Reynolds wrote, I look forward to screaming scab at my eight-year-old all night. She's not in the union, but she needs to learn. Former SAG after President Melissa Gilbert slammed the rules on Instagram, writing, For the love of God, people are suffering mightily, and this is what you have to say? Come on. This is the kind of silly bullshit that keeps us on strike. Meanwhile, Mandy Moore wrote on her Instagram stories, Is this a joke? Come on, SAG after. This is what's important. We're asking you to negotiate in good faith on our behalf. So many folks across every aspect of this industry have been sacrificing mightily for months. Get back to the table and get a fair deal so everyone can get back to work. For more on this story, head to THR.com. And for the latest entertainment news and updates, keep watching the Hollywood Reporter News. That's so a couple, honestly kind of funny. A couple things, right? <laughs> first things first. Um, I've been watching YouTube channels that review Marvel movies and the stuff that's coming. And they, soon as a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, there was that news about uh, sag after having a meeting with... The, and they just started celebrating, like, yo, the, the strike's over. The movies are coming back. Everything's good. I just finished hearing in that video right there, they're still striking. So FYI to anybody who, you know what I mean, is curious, the strike is not over. You know what I mean? This it's just has that, not been settled. I think, the writers I think, are settled, not the actors, right? I think Melissa Gilbert is right, though. That's some bullshit, like. First of all, we're on strike. That's number one. Now that we're on strike, you want to try to tell us what costumes we're allowed to wear during Hollywood Halloween season, which has shit to do with y'all. So it's a personal holiday. That's a holiday where they want to be with their family. So... How are you about to tell these people that if they children want to dress like the Incredibles, you just can't dress like one of the Incredibles. You just can't dress like the Joker. You just can't dress like how you whatever movie character has a movie out right now. You can't dress like that. Or if they're like from a sanctioned piece of work, that's wild. That's crazy. Wild. 
First of all, nanny, because I see the nanny's like head honcho, right? Nanny's like the nanny's over here, like, listen. Wait, wasn't listen. she the writer's one or is she the actor's one? I have no idea. It's, uh, you can't. I don't know anymore. You can't tell. I mean, we could Google that. <laughs> What's her name? I don't remember the nanny's name. The nanny. The white oh, chick that made the about, nanny. Um, yeah. Fran, Fran Dreschner. Yeah, she from the SAG or the, the Writers Guild? But because the Writers Guild is settled, is my understanding. So, and I'm not sure. then, yeah. She is the. No, enemy. no, she's the. She, no, she's the Actors Guild. Yeah, no, she is the one that's out there. Yeah, I would. You're think, right. I would think she would be in the Actors Guild because she's an actress, not a writer. But then again, a lot of a lot, of, a lot of them be writers. All yeah. I know is that's crazy. Telling yeah. Them what you, like, what, come on, that's crazy. I mean, it's just like it's. A, I think what's really interesting is the framing of like, yo, focus on what's important. This is the weirdo shit that makes us look stupid. Because, like, a lot of times that's kind of what happens with causes, right? Is, like, it starts off where you're riding a line. And, look, you should boycott the shit you're supposed to boycott in the industry. And if people are violating, whatever. I understand how strikes work and the general principle of this shit. But then there's, like, bro, it's Halloween. This is... They, they, they want them to stay on If track, somebody want to dress up on Spider-Man... Nobody Spider sent the memo, like, maybe you shouldn't even set a rule right now. Can we just deal with this shit? Because you setting the rules going to keep them out there longer. Nobody thought about this shit. They, no, they were Looks dead bad. ass, like... I'm pretty sure that their PR team was, like, legitimately, like, all right, we got to make sure we don't break the fucking character. You know, we can't go fucking anything. We, we stick to our guns. Nobody's dressing up as Marvel. That'll show them. I don't know. I'm assuming Marvel's included, but like, yeah, what Marvel's you, definitely going to be included in something like that. What if you All were the character? character they, they what if you were? You what if you played the character? They're telling you. They're telling you what they what they want. They don't want you to dress up as any licensed characters from anything. They want you to dress up as a generic vampire, a ghost, a generic zombie, or a spider. Not Spider Man, though. Not Spider Man. You know I mean? Not Spider Man, a spider, which I'll is do like, some bro. Smart ass shit you know, if I was... FYI, real quick, think about that for a second. You could either buy your kid a nice, cheap Spider Man costume that you could pick up at any store because Spider Man is super popular, or you want me to make my kid a fucking costume with fucking multiple arm appendages. You know what I mean? Like, do you know and how you call it a spider man to make a kid into a spider? Like, and yo, call it's it spider man. I could put my kid in fucking Spider Man pajamas and he Gucci. Or I could go. I think you have to go a little day. harder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but still, you know, like, come on now. Like, it's it's a super simple costume versus like a very complicated costume. Like, what? Why? Because you. I mean. I just think like like I get where they're coming from. I just think this is actually a really interesting thing that cause people can learn from is that you can't like break your your participants because that's what it is. It's like people are forgetting that the people in the strike are sacrificing heavily, and if you push your troops too far on some dumb shit that's unnecessary, right? Um, what are you doing? It's like you know, like away, it's like taking away liquor. You know what it's like? It's like the United States Army trying to take away heroin from the from the military, like from everybody who was in the military in the Vietnam War. Like, nah, kind of. Let them keep actually, on doing yeah. heroin. Keep on doing heroin. Keep on killing. You're good to go. You're good to go. No worries. You're out in well, Vietnam. At the very Shit least, like, do all the heroin you want to do. Come back home with a heroin addiction. All good, Bobby. You know what I mean? We know what we asked you to do. Like you got to take acceptable losses with certain things. You can't be putting. Or like, yeah, no, it's just it's just silly. But it's it's just something people can take away from that. If you go too militant, you're gonna lose your people. I mean, it's the same across business, across everything. Like you gotta be maybe some strict for sure. We got some common sense with the shit. Well, look, man, just. I, I ain't making name money, so but hopefully they come to a resolution. But till then, fuck them. What's next? Kanye. Kanye's Kanye next. news. Oh, 
I think we we actually didn't talk about Kanye last week because yeah, we, we went a whole week without being noteworthy enough. But here, nah, here but you we know are. What it, was? it was that that Kanye knew he knew Drake was rolling out, so he he backed off for a week or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he right back to it. He's about to drop an album too. I could tell. Right. But we've been saying how we have not actually. Ah, I like these TMZ Kanye people. For a long time. Um, he's, but in, he's in he's Europe. In, uh, Italy. I don't know if he's in Italy. He's somewhere in Europe still. Has been for months. Yes, but there's um, something going on with him that they're based on what we're about to show you. Um, there, he's got some ill feelings toward Kim and a dispute of some sort about the custody of their kids. Um, and he's turned to Elon Musk of all people to support him. So That's uh, wild. at some point, Kanye composed a text uh, to Elon Musk. It's unclear if he actually. I guess he did send it because you can see it's on his chat to Elon. He says, um, "When are we going to speak? You owe me nothing." You never have to speak to me again, but if we do speak, the nature of the relationship has to change. I'm not bipolar. I have signs of autism from my car accident. He got in a bad car accident in 2002, right. Uh, that was when his career was really just getting started. So um, he goes on in this text, and by the way, he, he then screenshots that text and sends it to a friend of his and says, put this out on social media, um, which is odd because Kanye can, he does his account on and it's very Twitter. Revealing it's very revealing to do this. But then he goes on, yes. and it's unclear why he's telling Elon Musk this, Unless yeah, it, he, he wants Elon to spread the word or something right. like that. So he continues, you can't watch Kim keep my kids from me and not say anything publicly and then call yourself my friend so I can bring my audience to your struggling platform. He disses him and then asks for his help in the same sentence. Right. It's all extremely bizarre. And like, like you said, Charles, it's weird because, you know, Elon did on Twitter for a little while uh, when all the anti-Semitic... Good to have you here with us. Twitter. I don't think he has Instagram. <laughs> what up, Zell Manel? He easily posted this text exchange on Twitter. Maybe that's to his point that he doesn't want to bring, you know, attention oh, and followers right. to Twitter. Wanna, right. Exactly. But the... Because if he had posted it himself the interaction will be on people. Twitter and and you know that only benefits but but, but, but but wait a minute I thought he gave it to a friend to spread the word so what, right, but, what it, come, but the difference is his friend posting it is different from it being posted on Kanye's Twitter that, that would get much more attention followers right. that would get attention. more attention and help me, help he, he doesn't here. want Elon to benefit from Kanye tweeting so it's retribution against Elon he doesn't want it on X but he wants somebody else to he do he doesn't it. want it on his Kanye doesn't want it if, if, yeah Harvey listen, it's, it's if Kanye West not a lot of makes sense if Jim nobody tweets something it doesn't get that much attention but it's getting attention because it's Kanye. Because it's Kanye. But so it would get more attention. Okay. It would get more eyes right. on Twitter, actually. Is, is, I don't want to die in this hill. Yeah, but please. <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal? Devin, what's the deal with Kim? With Kim, Kim? be honest. No, I mean, I don't understand. That's just the end of the video. Is well, them going been like this for a while. Yeah, the country hasn't seen his kids. I mean, he's been with them a few times. That's weird. The autism thing's a little weird. I looked online. As far as I can tell, there isn't any, you know, credible correlation between, like, major brain injury and autism. So it's all just very bizarre. Can we just be real here? He's clearly from, you can tell the he's going through, all over he's the place. Going he's going through something right now. And, you know, look, I get it. I'm a mud. friend post this for me. I wish the friend hadn't, but where they're not going to say no to Kanye, they're not going to say, well, he'd get it out no matter what. Right. Then he would have put it out. Right. But it's, it's, what has Elon done? Elon said nothing. And Elon apparently didn't respond. Otherwise, I would think Kanye would have put that right out there also. Right. So, yeah, if you're Elon, I think you look at it and you go, guy's going through, He's something. Going through something. Yeah. Gone for Pittsburgh. Okay. And, um, well, it's possible that um, Kanye's car accident. Saying, put, he put, just knows how to push his out. Pretty positive. You can't. All right, fair enough. Um, I don't think there's anything. I more love there. Kanye, but I definitely don't think you could get autism from a car accident. Um, definitely can, but know. he's also pushing an album. He does some crazy shit right before <clears throat> an album drop every time, bro. So, every single I don't time. Know why right. without I, don't, fail. I don't know why people without still fail. They don't. They like, still fall for all this like, shit. They fall for it every time. Like, bro, it's just Kanye ramping up for the album release. Like, don't take getting it all your attention again. You know what I'm saying? Don't take it so personal. And even then, this whole story is so bizarre. Just in general, as a story. It's a screenshot right. shared by a friend that's allegedly from Kanye. That There's a lot of alleged... I love TMZ. They're so good at a this. A lot of alleged. But that's a lot of... Like, they just started bickering because there was so little story <laughs> behind this one. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to die on this hill. Just TMZ or <laughs> I really do enjoy them. TMZ has become I, a great piece of our culture, which is a strange <laughs> idea. Yo, you <laughs> ever find fact. yourself just you ever find yourself just flicking through the channels and out of nowhere TMZ is on and you just end up on that channel for mad long? You don't even notice it and shit. I have the YouTube <laughs> version of that shit, but yeah, you gone through you it go. on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, the thing is, is I really, like, and it's all because of Flacco. Flacco started playing them TMZ videos, so I started watching the TMZ, and I really, like, I really like their dynamic. Like, they're really good together. They have great chemistry and shit, and I like while how everything, is other, tea, everything, everything is T, everything is T, everything is blowing the fuck out of proportion, they're usually not wrong. They're one of the more accurate news sites out there. 
So it's like you can rely no, they, on their, they, they, their you bullshit. Can, you can't rely. Yeah, you can rely on their bullshit. Which is you like, gotta be able to discern opinion from earlier in the week on progress. Anyone's uh, Twitter spaces, uh, we were having a conversation because we were we were, he was sharing videos that people were giving him, and the title would be like Ice Cube says Diddy is a traitor, and then like you click on the video and like. It's like a audio clip of Ice Cube, and he does not say that at all. And then some white girl with a script from fucking Fiverr is like reading this crazy script saying all these like accusations, you know what I mean? That are the title, but even then, never at any point is the title actually said. And it's just like, bro, this is just such a farce of like, so. At least TMZ doesn't do that. You know what I mean? Like nah. they're not they're not sensationalist. They're they just Well, they're definitely know, sensationalist, they're sensationalist, but they're not but clickbait to the full. They're not liars. They're not no, liars. they're not liars. They are not liars. And if they do make not a mistake, liars. they retract, they do all the good journalism yeah. things. It's just you gotta really want some Earl Grey. <laughs> Um, Listen, awesome. they've been around though for years now. Nah, they masters of that shit. Like you know, like Paris Hilton backed off a little bit. You TMZ lawyer, scooped lawyer, that shit. A lawyer put that shit together. Ain't that crazy? That is. Um, and speaking of crazy shit, Jay Z apparently comments on acting. I don't actually know if it's crazy shit, but we'll find out in a second. <laughs> this thing way old. What? <laughs> Good segue. Good Thanks. segue. So Jay-Z recently revealed that he had no interest in having an acting career, but he did have some praise for Nas's acting in the movie Belly. Hey, it's Asia Sky for Hip Hop DX, and check this out. Jay-Z, for all of his status and success, has yet to do what many of his rap peers have done and conquer Hollywood, and the reason for that is simple. He's never liked acting. In a rare interview with Complex to discuss his work with legendary music video director Hype Williams, Jay-Z admitted that his guarded nature has long kept him from pursuing a career in film and TV, at least in front of the camera. When asked about the rumor that he was supposed to play DMX's character in Hype Williams' movie Belly, Hove explained, That's a rumor because of how guarded I was. This is why I don't act, because I would get in my way. I would be thinking, no, I don't want to do something that I ain't going to look cool. But you know, I was young and immature, or I was young mentally. You know, if you see our own movies, I was in for like 30 seconds and I wasn't even speaking. Now Jay-Z hasn't completely shut acting though early in his career he famously starred in the 1998 straight to home video film streets is watching which came out months before belly directed by abdul malik abbott and co-written by hope himself the 60 minute film paired wild sometimes x-rated street vignettes with songs from his debut album reasonable doubt and follow-up effort in my lifetime volume one now despite his own aversion to acting jay-z did have some high praise for nas who made his acting debut alongside dmx in the hype williams classic belly hope said i had no idea how nas did that because i felt like he was in the same place as me but he did it and he made it work but i never was meant to be in belly i don't even know where that came from so what are your thoughts on Jay-Z shutting down the idea of him having an acting career? And what do you think about his Right, I, I always, um, Jay was always great at being himself in things because it wasn't just the streets is watching. He was also in Paper Soldiers and the Death of a Dynasty, right? This is Watching um, is the most amazing movie ever. So shout out to Amazing. Shoots, I enjoyed it. Um, but Academy Award yeah. to Jay-Z for me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know what? The um, streets is watching. I don't know what to tell you. He was. I'll tell you this. He was great in that shit. He was better than Nas and Belly. First of all, can we Damn. talk about what people don't like to talk Africa. about? Let's do it. I want to know. Can we talk about what people... Why y'all acting like Nas' acting was great? First of all, he was stiff. He was wild. Stiff. Like, he was stiff. He was talking stiff. That doesn't take away the fact that that's one of the greatest movies of all like, time. Hey, so, Tia, but Tia, I got shot. Tia, I got shot. Tia, you know, like you, when you, you should look, probably be a little bit more in older. Pain, when you get you got older, a shot, sir. Watch that shit, bro. Yo, then when you get older and you, you finally watch these movies, you realize. No, I, I, I seen it. I seen it. I seen this one. You gotta right. overact. You realize if ever a time to overact. Well, it's you when realize you when shot. you're younger that that's your time to be like ah. ah. You know what I'm saying? You been you been DMX in the shower? Yo, it was great. That was great. That's the best part of that movie is DMX, who had amazing acting skills, by the way. No, no, and no, no. Nas, I contest. Well, yes, whatever you think is the best part of the movie to you, you're right. 
No. But, you know what was <laughs> the best part of the movie to me? You know what was the best part of the movie to me? What? What? Uh, um, what's the name? Tion Hicks, his girlfriend. See, I Terrell Hicks, Terrell Hicks. Oh my God, I love Terrell her. Terrell Hicks so, was funny in that shit. Uh, so much. So she fire. was so. She's such a beautiful that and Bronx woman. Still. Oh my and God, she she's was so, so beautiful. She was she's the so way beautiful. Hype Williams. The way Hype Williams like illuminated her skin. But, it was no. just like it made her black skin look so. I've she never just seen a so movie beautiful. do that. It was so elegantly, so well done. It was art. It was art in another way that only Hype Williams would have been able to do. It would right. take a black director that like understands, you know, the importance of illustrating a, a black woman's beauty and like putting that on front. Illustrating the, the melanin, did that was the beautiful the melanin. melanin. It was just yo, fucking amazing. Oh my God. See, that was my favorite part. Listening. But nah, all of it was great, yo. Everything in that movie was great, with the exception right. of Nas's acting. You know what I mean? With the exception <laughs> Nas's of Nas's acting. Nas's was acting. absolute trash. But you know what? Shit. Nas's acting at the beginning scene when he's not talking and he's just walking through the club menacingly with the glowing in the in the in the dark you had eyes, hope, right you had that hope. was fire that was fire you had hope that and then fire. he started talking he walked he walked stoically like a motherfucker you know what i mean yeah. like ain't nobody walk in the first five minutes of a movie the way nas walked walk the, the front, first five right. minutes in that movie you know what i mean then he talked and his acted, walking was better and than it was his all acting. over at that point his it walking was, was better than his acting. Hill for <laughs> But I love you, Nas. Him, I, I love you, Nas. Every, However, every, everything I around him know. saved everything around him saved it, though. You know what I mean? Like, and you know what? Let's be honest. T Boz's acting wasn't that great either. And I love T Boz. I love T Boz. There was more a lot of Chili. acting that wasn't Chili's that great. Approved. I could tell that Chili is approved. T Boz is a little bit more of a like hood chick. So shout out to T Boz. I love you. I had a crush on her when I was a little kid. You know what I mean? I had a crush on on all the like short bob with the with the blonde hair. I, that shit was amazing to me back then. Anyway, the point being, Nas wasn't alone, but everything else uplifted the movie. DMX, um, uh, Hype Williams directing, Method Man, Method Man. I go, I rose so low from state to state, state to state. Oh and your man God. from and your man and your man uh uh what's his name from from uh Menace Society? I don't like that shit. Yo, I don't like yo, I it's crazy because like you know what? He said in another interview that he didn't like that role. He was supposed to get um I forget whose role he went out for. Like when he went to do belly, he was going for like DMX's role or somebody's role. You know what I mean? Like somebody major's role. And he didn't get it. And he ended up with that character. So when he ended up with that character, he was overacting and trying to shit on the movie by like doing the character like unnecessarily dramatic, like eating a banana. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit right there. And it was like, yo, that shit came out perfect, puppy. Like you thought you were ruining the movie? You fucking made the movie even better with that whole thing. Like it was incredible. So it was like him shitting on the movie in his head made the movie even better um <laughs> and then fucking uh 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 lennox yo that movie was just yeah you wanna romp with me yeah, yeah. so yo, if y'all wanna, wanna have wanna it okay so i'm gonna put this me. into the universe here if y'all wanna watch movies with us on discord y'all gotta join that patreon yo join the patreon let's watch movies together let's set up a week a, a movie weekly weekday weekly we watch movie Weekly, we take your record. Hit up that Patreon. I pu- I put you guys do it on Discord. Clearly, the <clears> best <throat> movies of all time because I'm the greatest of all time at everything I do. Subscribe, so this subscribe be, to the how Patreon. How could this not be great and fantastic? So I'm just saying that's a perk. You get the link, everybody. We'll co- and, the- and by oh, the shit. way, I'm gonna link. put that link there right now. I'm gonna share that link. To- Patreon.com/slash. No I'm no fascist, unlike Progress Anyone, right? So of course not. I'm no fascist. So like we I'll let him pick his fascist movies because anything that he picks is a fascist movie. You know what I mean? So like, you know, but that's because I'm not <coughs> that's why I let him do that. 
You know what I'm but saying? But if he picks like a really good movie, like some really nice heartfelt shit. No, I'm gonna let him pick anything he wants. Like Miracle on 34th Street. I just don't know if that's no, a fascist he can't movie. Pick that. He can't pick that. He can't pick that. But, I'm not um, watching no. I'm not watching no fucking 60s movies. Listen. Yo, the point of the yo, movie, we will watch. Happens, we will watch. Know. Streets is watching. And I, I got one for you. We'll do a versus. We'll watch Streets is watching and then Belly. Yo, and that's then lit. We'll let everybody decide what was the better. Now, I will say, yo, Lindell, Belly's Lindell, better. do Hold not on. come at us with no Hold on, disclosure. Blinks, man. Disclosure. Come on, bro. Belly is already filmed better because, <laughs> of course. However, we got to do that. We're going to do movie versus. So, yo, the let, we gonna and if we're going to run that, we'll come back on this show and tell y'all what the community thought, and then y'all can come join it next week so you can become part of the show in that way, too. Word. And we and Both we get food. in the chat yeah. and we chat chat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, All right, yo, got? moving on. So, but Move it's it. not over with Jay-Z because Jay-Z. It's not then, over with Jay-Z. Uh, he was at a football game. Some fan caught him on camera was like, hey, Jay. I'd take the 500000 I'll tell you that much. And then Jay-Z <laughs> oh, ended up link. with an interview that came out um, with him. him and um, what's, what's, um, what's, uh, There's something interesting Oprah's... online, Jay. I'd love to hear what you think about this. If you had there a choice between getting paid $500,000 in cash or lunch with Jay-Z, yeah. which would you choose? You gotta, you gotta take the money. What, you, what I'm gonna say? Yeah, I mean, everything I'm gonna say. No, everything... no, only because people say, of course you take, you take lunch with Jay-Z because the wisdom that you would get from him would would be so uh, beneficial to you. There would yeah. only be a matter. You but, would take the money. Yeah, you, because you got the, you got all that in the music for, for ten ninety nine. That's a, that's a bad deal. I was I wouldn't tell you to cut a bad deal. Like, I don't take know. the five hundred thousand, go buy some albums and listen to the albums. It's all there. If you, okay. you if you piece it together and really listen to the music for the words for what it is, it's all there. Everything that I said was gonna happen, happen. Everything that I said I wanted to do, I've done. And there's the blueprint. The blueprint, literally, to me and my life and my journey is is there already. Yo, that's true. Plus, he made a book. Oh shit! Up, Still right? playing. Nobody fucking with Malik. Jigga. That's just it. Ho yeah. You you a groupie ass bitch if you were to say I want the dinner or the lunch, but um, nonetheless, I would I would definitely love to have lunch with Ho. Um, I mean, I would sure. like to meet him like that, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um. But I'm I'm take the, the, I'm gonna take the money. I'm taking the money every time. Every so like, time. I'd rather I'd rather get to the point where I'm meeting him because I took that money and then I did something so interesting. He want to do wow. something with me. Like I want to exactly. meet him in that kind of context. I'm not sure that if I, because yo, I once sat down with a guy that was very wealthy. And he was willing to like talk to me in the kind of context that people are <laughs> I'm describing. Sorry, hold it. With the lunch. I don't mean to cut you off, but that just sounded like the beginning of a like a like a, a story. I once sat down with a man who was very wealthy. <laughs> right, that's lit. <laughs> I'm happy that it you said like that. Sounds like the beginning of somebody's biography. Right. But right. like, um, yeah, that's cool. Maybe I'll, that's a good one. Anyway, um, but like, uh, yeah, it was just like, I, so I effectively got the opportunity to have a, a quote unquote lunch like that. And you walk out and you're not richer because of it. It's just that guy will say some shit to you that leaves you puzzled for three years. So at least if you have the money, you can learn a lot quicker. <clears throat> Man, listen, I have the money. I'm doing everything I said I was going to do with my money. And not tell nobody. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next topic. Will Smith surprises Jada at book signing. Will Smith. Pissed me off already. <laughs> Our union is a sloppy public experiment. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the world-famous Ed Lover, and you are watching Forgotten Kings TV. That's right, Forgotten Kings TV. Come on, son. Our union is a sloppy public experiment. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is a, a sloppy public experiment in unconditional love. As I stand here before you today, I am happier than I've ever been in my entire life. Can you love somebody 
forever, no matter what. <laughs> oh, boy, was like, mm. <laughs> I saw you, man. I saw your face. Um, <laughs> you know, can you show up and love somebody for the rest of your life, even when you don't agree with them? And there ain't nobody on earth except you, mommy. You, mommy. My mom. Jade is the best friend I have ever had on this planet. And I am going to show up for her and support her for the rest of my life. Oh, man. I can already hear the Facebook. I can hear the Facebook. I'm going to let you y'all go first because... Mm -mm. I mean, I, I, this listen. Way, let the, I'm at a. I don't know how much I care anymore. To be honest with nah, you. Yeah, I'm all the way. I'm all the way done. That right there told me people need to mind their fucking business. That man is clearly happy. He's fine. He doesn't want to be fucking bothered. <laughs> like he doesn't like, care. All that shit that like I see dudes online being like, "Oh, Jada's emasculating Will." It's like. That's in your head. That's what's happening in your head. Will Smith Facts. clearly don't feel that way. So if Will that's Smith like, just gonna that's go like do somebody, some fucking like millionaire somebody, shit. That's like when somebody tells who's religious tells me I'm gonna burn in hell for whatever reason. I'm just like, but if I don't believe in hell, how am I gonna burn in it? I don't know <laughs> if I heard the same thing you heard. <coughs> you know what I really like, heard? You know what I really heard when I heard What did you shit? hear, sir? Bitch, I don't give a fuck what you say to this public. You ain't never leaving me. I'm going to be with you, and you're going to be with me for the rest of our motherfucking lives. You want to do another tell-all book, bitch? Do it on a, the next lifetime and decade. He was being nice, but the reality is that motherfucker really went in front of everybody and was like, and I'm going to support her for the rest of our lives, for the rest of my life. I'm just Forever. saying, we'll be doing what he want to do. I think Will Smith, a grown man. You know, like, I think like, people forget that. Will Smith has done shit none of us could do. How I are we going to tell that man how to live his life or what he should care about? Also, I think what it is that people are misunderstanding, right, is that everybody sees it from, like, the Jada has just been open about her end of things, right? August Alcina, her, her boo thing uh, opened up his big mouth and blew up their affair, right? So she went on her talk show with Will and addressed it so that it was addressed, right? And then from there, everybody kind of like took this like stance of like, Jada's the bad guy. But I'm pretty sure Will's been cheating on her this whole time. I don't care, Jada's the bad wild guy. Other bitches, Jada's you know the bad I mean? guy. Yeah. I don't get what I'm I dead ass, ass think these are people that understand guy. how to make money on shit like this. Right? Like if Remy Ma is making money off of a easy the block captain situation, then why would Will Smith <laughs> and Jada not make money off of this shit? Like crazy attention like this entire world's economy is based on your attention as flacco talks about all the time the power of your clicks and where you put your time and shit that's real so they have managed to monopolize a global conversation for like three years and frankly i don't even know if they've made movies or art I know well, she wrote a book, but i don't even know if will smith dropped a movie but yeah, i think about will smith movie. all the time and I'll say this, okay? I still ain't watch that shit. I get it, what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I agree, but it's still, I ain't asked for all that. Y'all volunteered that. It says y'all volunteered that. I'm going to think what I think because that's what y'all wanted me to think. Mm -hmm. Fuck Jada. <laughs> Run it, but like she be in a heel. She's just like in the WWE. They're like, bro, she a heel run right now. And everybody behind the scenes is laughing. Them books, I'm bitch. sure... I'm sure that they go home and plan the next move together. That's what I really believe. I think Will Smith and Jada planned the whole thing together. Everybody out there doing exactly the what they want. Because this is top tier marketing, bro. This is organic top a la market. max. The amount of free yeah, press they get. They did a great job. 
on some heel yeah. shit. Because they all probably nah, like, yo, absolutely. Vince, how do we do this shit? Vince was like, all right, let me tell you how I turn anybody into a villain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at Vince McMahon giving the, the Schmidt's <laughs> advice on how to turn heel properly. Yo, <laughs> hilarious. You know what? Anyhow. Moving on to the next topic, related, Diddy wants to snuff Will Smith for Oof. him and Jada coming on to J-Lo when they were together back in the day. So, again, Let's Will get Smith, this. Will no Smith probably down. Been, Will Smith Swim probably been the dog. Diddy wanted to snuff Will Smith for hitting on Jennifer Lopez. Hey, what's up, I'm A-Dub, and check this out. So Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Beal, was asked about the alleged incident in an interview with the Art of Dialogue, where he recalled Puff's heated reaction after suspecting that Will Smith and Jada were trying to lure J-Lo into their bedroom. We were at a birthday party that I think either Matt Damien was giving for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. It was at the Four Seasons. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck. I like how he's saying his name. Will Smith and uh, Jada that was sitting on the other side of the room. So I know Puff so well that he stood up. When he stood up, he walked and like and did his own some, some kind of way like, and then he was like this, you know, like I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him. So I go towards him and he said to me, he said, yo, I think Will and Jada is trying to scoop up Jennifer. I want you to stay close because I'm going to snuff him. I said to myself, Will Smith will beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> he can scrap now, but I don't think he could beat Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Well, he can scrap. You know what I'm saying? So then he said that shit. <laughs> so I didn't go back over there where um, Will Smith's sister and her husband was. I stayed like in the, like about, if he snuffed Will, I could move slow enough that Will could probably get two or three punches back in. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, Mm -mm -mm. That shit was funny. He thought that uh, Jada and Will was coming on too strong to Jennifer, making advances. It's unclear when the alleged incident happened exactly, but Diddy and Jennifer Lopez dated between late 1999 and early 2001 after meeting on a music video set. Despite once apparently wanting to punch Will Smith, Diddy reportedly played the role of Peacemaker last year when he slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars for poking fun at Jada Pinkett's alopecia. Page 6 reported that at the time that... There. Recap. Okay. Listen. Jada for the rest of her life. The reason I don't... That little... That little line right there that Gene Deal said, or like, oh, I was far enough that like Will Smith would have been able to get two or three punches in himself. That tell me that nigga always been a hater. That's why I don't ever believe nothing he says about Puff. Because I'm always just like, yo, this nigga is uh upset he got fired ass bitch. Kinda like um what was his name? Uh Choke No Joke with Rockefeller, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, yo, bro, you worked with us for a minute and you just became a bitter bitch and the rest of your career became just talking shit about us. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only thing you ever get paid for. It's like talk shit and throw throw dirt on the name. So I don't really believe Gene Deal, but it's still a funny story, especially following the Will Smith J story. Yeah. I mean... It's funny. I I I I I think Will could take Diddy. I think so. I think Will could take a lot of people. I think so. I mean, he did slap the shit out of. Him. We saw that live. That Will did right. just like. I mean, he, he on just the, been on the hanging hand, out Diddy, with all the Diddy's fucking action people. Diddy, right? Like even Gene Deals talking shit about him, hating on him. But even then, he still made sure to save. Now, Diddy can't scrap, though. You know what I mean? So, like, Diddy, on the on the other side, Diddy's not no Chris Rock. He is not going to stay slapped. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> Diddy, Diddy's different. Um, fair. Uh, with that, I guess we can move on to a further Bad Boy Connected story where uh, Tupac apparently might have been on Bad Boy. I'm using my apparently as I put the link up. Flacco picked Allegedly. this one. <laughs> Allegedly. Apparently. Allegedly. Allegedly. According to his brother. Hey, it's Asia Sky for Hip Hop DX, and check this out. According to Tupac's brother, Mo Prem Shakur, Tupac and Biggie were nearly label mates at Bad Boy Records. On Tuesday, October 17th, Mo Prem sat down with the Art of Dialogue, and he revealed that prior to inking a deal with Death Row Records in 1995, Tupac was reportedly considering joining Diddy's Bad Boy. For the record, we were cool with them at one point. 
we were cool with them at one point. There was a point where Pac was even uh, considering uh, 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 going to Bad Boy before his relationship with Death Row. He was considering going to Bad Boy to, uh, because he, he wanted to be on a black label. He wanted to be with his people. He wanted to be with the brothers. You know what I mean? He supported black business. So there was a period where we were all cool. And over time, you know, things happened. Pac started seeing things. And, you know, Biggie was on Puffy's label. So, you know, you know, with them two, it was Puffy calling the shots. <sighs> so um, there, there, there was some legitimate problems there, but, you know. Mo Prima also spoke about Tupac's splintered friendship with former Thug Life member Big Stretch, who was with the late rapper the night he was shot multiple times in November of 1994 at Quad Recording Studios in Manhattan. After that shooting, Stretch was shot and killed one year later. Speaking of Puffy and Biggie, what was the issue between Pac and Big Stretch? Mm. <laughs> you say that to last, huh? I see you. I see you. You say that to last, huh? <laughs> nah, I mean, um, Pac and Stretch are best friends. Pac and Stretch are best friends. Uh, Stretch was with him when he got shot at Quad. Um, and after that, Stretch went on tour with Biggie. So anybody familiar with our clique understood, would understand that that's weird. Uh, because if he was rolling with Pac, he was rolling with Pac. He was kind of, you know, he was kind of jealous like that. These are my, my people. This is my crew. This, you know, you down with me. You down with the best. You know, so, and considering Pac was having some issues with Biggie, it did not look right. Right, right. And Pac, he also felt like he had something to do with what happened at Quad, right? Because I know that Pac made a comment saying that, you know, when they pulled out the guns, the way he reacted, he reacted in a way like he already knew what was going to happen. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that was Pac's sentiment, you know, that, I mean, Stretch was a big dude, about 6'4", 300, you know, um, but Pac claimed that he, as soon as the niggas pulled out, he, he dropped down. And it was, it was disturbing to hear that. It was disturbing to think about. It was disturbing to deal with because we all, the whole family, loved Stretch. Everybody loves Stretch. Stretch was a, a lovable dude, but, you know, we all got our demons. Tupac signed to Death Row Records when Suge Knight infamously visited him at Clinton Correctional Facility in New York and put up the money to bail him out of prison in late 1995. While there are stories about Pac supposedly signing his Death Row contract on a napkin or toilet paper, the late rapper's childhood friend, David S. Ash, who was there during the meeting, disputed the claim in an interview with The Independent. So what are your thoughts on Tupac reportedly considering signing to they Death Row? They just wildly Row throw extra shit into every one of their stories, eh? Like, just some extra unrelated uh, factoid. I don't believe that. What? Well, like the part of. Uh, yeah. Now, nah, well, each one of you at one at a time. Hold it. What? What? Like, what why did they bring up the contract on the napkin thing? Like, Hip Hop TX always be doing some shit like that. They be throwing in some, like, extra unrelated thing to like stretch out the video an extra 14 seconds but like absolutely anyway. you're right you're absolutely right about that sarah what's your thing i just think it's bullshit what all of a sudden now everybody want to tell a different side of everybody else's story that isn't a lot mark understood that's just how I feel sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, how a lot of shit goes. I think, I think that, um, you know what I think happened? I think a lot of times we like to think things are like planned out or like a great like conspiracy sometimes. Not saying any of us here, right? But like humans, right? Which is why so many conspiracy theories are so popular and shit like that, right? But like a lot of times, what is the answer really is like some fucking basic shit. You know what I mean? And I think that what we have here is a case of like people like Mo Prem, Shakur, Tupac's brother, and Gene Deal, and Reggie Wright, and all these guys that were involved with this story. I think that they've been involved in this story for so many years now. And they've seen the way that the algorithms work, right? To the point where like, even they're going to alter their stories to try to get it to be the popular one that drives the clicks. You know what I mean? So it's almost like the 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 wag the what's the what's the saying of the 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 wag the the tail wagging the dog. You know what I mean? Or 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 no, some shit like you. that that they say. You know what I mean? I definitely like eventually think... the story starts shaping. Is, is it a a case of art imitating life or life imitating art? You know what I mean? Like is is what ends up happening. And I definitely I think, think like it's, now... it's weird how like just like it's like for a minute I discovered that all these ex mobsters were just like doing these tell alls, like bodyguards who got out of jail, and even like made men and shit were just 
bro, you can get some of these guys who are like really active in New York and they just tell it everything on some random other guy's podcast and they just have all these podcasts together. And we're Hold saying like they just tell it everything. <laughs> and I mean like I mean it's sometimes true, like, like, like I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Sammy the Bull. Like that dude was on Facebook just beefing in the comments like he's Talib Kweli or something. It's some like <clears throat> It's just weird to me. So, like, all of a sudden, these guys who, like, I mean, my understanding is took these codes of secrecy for life and shit are making a hella bank just snitching. Which, like, it's not lost on me that this is what the content is. It's, like, and it's, I guess, I don't know, it's it's similar to what, like, Trap Lore Ross does, except that these are all the people that were in the story doing it. So, it's, I guess, a bit better. Right. I mean, listen, in particular, in this case, right, in this situation, I really mean it in that way, right? Because Tupac wasn't supposed to be signed to Bad Boy. You know what I mean? Mo Prem is saying, essentially, like, oh, Tupac wanted to be on a Black-run label. You know what I mean? He could have ended up anywhere. He could have also ended up at Bad Boy. But it's not, he's also not saying it like he had meetings and he's his brother, so he's there. So he would have had meetings with Puff. He it would have been known, you know what I mean? But he didn't, you know. Um, and again, that's why I think that he's saying it that way because he's trying to draw the clicks and the views from the sound by being salacious, uh, you know. He's probably getting hella bread off this shit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they all are. I'm trying yeah. to tell you this, what we gotta do a whole day. Let's make up some bullshit. <laughs> that's what I was joking with. Um, that's what I was joking with. Uh, uh, Polly. Yeah, if we, if Polly, you wanna, anyone, we just put that satire shit on it, and we good. We just gotta we label good. it satire. That's what South Park does in every episode. They label their shit satire at the start of every episode, and nobody gets mad at that shit. Safe. Hey, what's up, Linda? Some of the people they're so called snitching on are no longer with us. That's a fact too. Like they come out that and they start talking about all the guys that can no longer come back at them. Right, right, right. I mean, and, and like I'm not, I'm not telling anybody how to live their life. It was just something I noticed really started happening, uh, across, because it was weird. It was with the economics podcasts, right? I was just trying to get my business game up, and next thing you know, I'm hearing about mobsters talking about being hitmen and shit, and I'm like, this is fucking a bizarre twist of the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> and in a bizarre twist. <laughs> Um, Let's go. Yeah. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Reggie Wright on. No, this. no, I'm clicking. I'm clicking. There's uh, more of the Tupac drama. It's been dragging on the Tupac Biggie with Keefe D's arrest and people speculating that Diddy's going to be arrested, which is not happening. What the fuck? Is this it? Sportstissuebox.com. Oh, um, yeah, you gotta... I would fast forward to... Oh, it's just... Well, you, listen, you listen to T, uh, TK Kirkland and Gene Deal, there's some truth to it. Man. Alright, let's see if I can find the exact turnover. Okay, fuck it. We're gonna deal with some sports issues. After Keefe D arrested, we're talking about Diddy. Diddy was in on it. And it was audio from back in the past where Keefe D was, you know, intimating that Diddy may have paid him $1 million. What's your thoughts on that? Is it nonsense? Is there anything to that? What's your thoughts on Diddy? Well, well, you, listen, you listen to TK uh, T. Kirkland and Gene Deal. There's some yeah. truth to it, right? You know, they, they say they saw the check. But forget all of that. Keefe D tried already. So nothing's happened to Diddy. Diddy is free as a, as a as whatever. He got to go deal with God. He ain't get on his knees and repent yet, and he good. If he got on his knees and repent, my, my belief is he good, right? But as far as the criminal system, sure can't happen to Diddy no more. Keefe D already tried. Keefe, Diddy or any of his person would never get on the phone with Keefe D or anybody associated with Keefe D now. No more. So my point to Keefe tried. He got on a plane with the police and went to Zip's club and tried to set up Zip. Zip was smart enough to tell him, hey, dog, I'm out of the business. You can try to talk to my nephew, deal with my nephew. All this on wire. But I'm out of the game. I'm dying from cancer. And I'm old right now. So my point is, he already tried to do it. It failed. So Zip was smart enough. I was on the side that day or whatever not to do anything so they could get Zip implicated on a crime. Well, they were just trying to get Zip implicated on a crime like they had Keefe D and then try to get Zip to roll on, on Puffy about the check and all of that. It didn't work. He played his card. Any shit else he can do was say, Puffy has something to do with it. Just because you say somebody has something to do with it, don't mean shit in the court of law in the state of, in the country or the United States of America. 
what's your hunch? Do you, do you do you actually believe that at all? I believe Diddy threw it out in a conversation, <coughs> like like he said. You know, just like me and you up here, and we talking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, take care of that motherfucker, or, you know. Right. And you, you know, and then you be like, all right. And then it happened. And Diddy was like, like oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> these niggas actually did it. Mm. Now, I know Diddy position at one time. That's why it took so long for him to pay. Was because he was like, nah, nigga, y'all did that because y'all nephew, your nephew got beat up. Y'all didn't do that because where Keefe, the whole thing was nigga shit. That gave me extra incentive, knowing that my nephew just got whooped on, and you were talking about giving up a million dollars. Shit, nigga, we did that. And apparently, if you believe everything that that Keefe says, TK Kirkland says, Gene Deal says, then apparently then uh, Diddy eventually paid. But um, who would ever know? So, and this is how 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 crazy of a coincidence could it possibly be? That Diddy talks to these two to set up Tupac. Tupac's in Vegas at a Tyson fight. Happens to jump and beat on the people's mm -hmm. nephew. They yeah. roll him out, kill him, and then all of this intertwines. So is that a, is a conspiracy? Like it, it's kind of crazy to even think about yeah. that it could yeah. that it actually happened. But could it have happened? Like I don't even know how to ask the damn question. It's so wild to uh -huh. that it could come that kind of coincidental. Yeah, yeah, well, shit, shit like that. Be black and shit, white, right? shit happens. I call it a two for one. We're keeping it on like shit, man. I got this offer on the table. But y'all know who the missing uh, link to all of this? Who can solve a lot of this? This I'm about to put her out there. I kind of like her. I know she's going through her uh, her own issues right now with her hearing and stuff. But guess who names has always been in the middle of it for being there at the conversation, according to Keefe D and Zilp. Not according to Zilp, but, you know, she, she said hearing? her hearing is going. Foxy. Foxy, Foxy, Foxy Brown. Brown was allegedly in the car with Zilp when Keefe D and them met up and even Von Zilp offered him the gun. You know, which that's the myth that's out there. Everybody keeps saying Von Zilp gave him the gun and all of that. He offered, Keefe said he offered him the gun, but he told him, no, 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 we good. We good. We got our own shit. But Foxy was in the car. Just thanks to Foxy come through and say, "Oh yeah, that conversation did happen." Well, and then, yeah. and then you got you got Puffy and you got Gene Dillon now saying that uh that that Puffy called. How much more of the clip the are we gonna watch? Was that us? Was that us? Yo, can we get this? He's that's it. Talking. That's it. That's it. That's it. I wasn't sure when the relevant parts were done, but I'm like, I don't know if we should watch the full I mean, clip. Um, I, he just threw Foxy Brown into the mix. Just like speculation, like if it was you or me, like he's been watching the same stuff that we've been watching. You know what I mean? And just trying to make his best conclusion from that, combined with the little bit that he did know, or was told, or believes from back then. You know what I mean? Like nothing that he said was like actual factual, except for him being like. Oh hey, you know who was in a car when some Foxy was there? But from what I heard, and then people run with that shit. I just find people it so it like fascinating, cause like yeah, I'm sure the traffic's crazy. Like even even with my limited run of album crazy. reviews, Tupac is a powerful keyword, powerful fucking keyword, powerful keyword. Let me tell you something. I was saying this in uh, Progress Anyone's Twitter Spaces where we were talking about it. And yeah, and shout out Amanda to people on Spaces to, watching us. Shout like out the to video. Spaces, and like the video if you're on YouTube. Shout out to the Spaces. Word. Um, and the whole bad boy gang. Um, but uh, Commander was in there saying essentially everything that uh, Reggie Wright was just saying. You know what I mean? And something that I noticed that I pointed out was like, yo, bless Diddy, yo. Diddy has been not only a cash cow to everybody who worked with him and was able to take advantage of their careers properly, right? But like, and he like made wild people who could have just been in the hood not doing nothing and, you know, rich and to have a moment. Not only those people. Not only all the people that he employed with all his businesses, whether it be Sean John or Justin's or fucking Ciroc, not only did he make all those people money, but then all the people on YouTube that have made so much money off of key Diddy algorithm fucking conspiracy theory word, like, yo, they have made a fucking profit off of that, man, yo. Like, wow, bread. Off a of conspiracy theory. If it wasn't about him being Illuminati, it's about him setting up Biddy, I mean, um, Tupac and Biggie and being like, he's the bad guy to everything. Everything. He's it like the boogeyman, boogeyman. Yeah, like he's like the one that's probably like driven the most traffic. Him and then I would think Jay Z after. 
Um, there's a lot of people that do that. I think Taylor Swift might actually take the cake on that one, to be honest with you. She'd be scary big. Nah, I'm talking about for conspiracy theory videos. I'm not playing. Have you not been watching oh, this football shit I, play I out? Know. If you want to talk about football news and Taylor Swift connected, uh, oh, she started yeah, nah, dating this motherfucking... So, like, she started dating this guy, and then there's so many conspiracy theories that it's to the point where the NHL has planted this dude and her as a relationship in order to spike sales in the NFL because they were struggling. So now they can kind of tap into the Swifties. And what's crazy is that it did work, whether or not it was a conspiracy theory. So, nah, the Swifty verse is, is deep, man. That's what they do. They go on Tumblr, yeah, I know she's popular. She's and popular. then they, like, like make conspiracy they're like she's up there that's all i'm saying she got a scary big one like you don't want to fuck with the swifties <clears throat> right but yeah uh still uh topic of the week yeah i'm Let's getting it hit the topic of the week joe buttons uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> talk I don't even know what to say. You gotta yeah, you gotta talk to him. <laughs> a lot of them ain't heard your voice in weeks. Oh, shit. <laughs> Audience. A lot of them did, though. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? A couple of extra people, sort of. There's a couple of people. Mm-hmm. Sort of. I like modesty. <laughs> a couple of people? It was a couple of people. Stop. It was a few people. <laughs> 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 you know, one thing about Patreon was good. You can be able to tell who's Leave me alone, on. yo. <laughs> and they tell you how much you make instantly in real time. And salute. You know, salute. You know, this modest look, you can fool them, but you can't fool you can't me. Fool us. You wore that locks hat you, you wore the other day. Yeah. You try to wear it again. Mm-hmm. Like, you want them to feel that I'm still with you. They don't feel that way. People are mad. We faced it. You did a full time jack move. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Are you going to give it back or are you riding this wave of Patreon? I'm pressing you on the air. I don't understand the question. What do you mean? Full time jack move. Are you going to give back the content publicly? Yeah. A lot of people woke up on Wednesday you expecting, too. you know, the regular pod. All right. Are y'all speaking for the fans? Or, or was y'all I don't know what happened. Because if you leave it to them, it's going to be like five minutes of this shit. Basically, uh, um, the Drake controversy week, um, he put the episode behind a Patreon uh, sign-up wall, right? Ooh. So, like, you couldn't see the episode. Unless it was on Patreon. That's none of interesting. The co- none of the co-hosts. I, I found the thing that I found the most interesting is the fact that none of his co-hosts knew that he was doing this. Um, a good example of how everybody isn't. <laughs> nobody, nobody on that show is his partner. Like nobody is his partner. That's Joe's <laughs> show and Joe does as he pleases with the show. None of them knew. They were all sitting there shocked. Like what? Um, but yeah, he put it. He put the episode um, where he read Drake's tweets. Uh, oh, not tweets. Um, private message, audio message. I guess um, he put it behind the Patreon. Um, yeah, uh, that's an I interesting top, and I shitty business move. Is, yeah, what, what do you think? People, Joe was. He said that his father hit him up. And people hit him up, and they're like, his father was like, yo, the government just can't take away government cheese. Like, to, to say, like, just because you're giving free content doesn't mean you have the right to take it away from people. You know what I mean? Like, if it's free, it has to be free all the time. Well, that's the and thing. Should, it's like... You shouldn't have put you shouldn't have put the episode behind. Well, that's what his, he was saying his father said to him. Oh, but word? that's a fact. Because, like, listen, listen. In the What's short the play... In the short play, I see what you're doing. You have traffic. People want to watch this. You're going to get a payout. In the big picture, nobody's ever going to trust you to not do this again. Forever and ever. Like, even five years from now, in the back of your fans' minds, they're going to remember this one. Because this is an anti-fan move. Like, yo, in my opinion, your podcast is free. It could be exclusive to the platform. But this is like an agreement you've made with like, like, look, Chris Chrome, right? This guy likes this shit. He'd be watching it weekly, loyal, dedicated, giving his time, energy. If you want to sign up to the Patreon, cool. But to then gate a free episode without notice 
is kind of harsh. Like it's not good consumer practices. It's not how you retain users over time. You will get people that will pay you, but nobody has a good feeling in their stomach doing it. And that's not the kind of way you want to take people's money. That's how like, you know, people lose clients and shit. Because anybody that spends money and walks away feeling funny after, well, now they don't feel good about their purchase. And if we talk about value, it's not a valuable purchase. They feel wrenched or whatever. Like, especially that motherfucker that's trying to watch every episode, and they have since, like, episode five or whatever, and he too broke. That motherfucker is so mad at you right now. And you I hurt him watching, for no good I reason. I watching him a long time ago, bro. <laughs> yeah, so... I stopped watching him a long time ago. Burr, no, I feel you. I definitely don't watch him like that at all. The only thing that made me tune in was the Drake thing. Um, <clears throat> which is which like, is look, I, why I saw that video. I, um, like. I just found it interesting. I think that it's a good topic for us as a podcast, right? Like, no, no, definitely <clears throat> a dope topic. I just feel like, you know, I agree with Holden and for me, you know, it's it's not shocking. It's Joe. Right. Like, and I, it just feels like needy. Like, bro, you don't you have millions? I mean, he's <laughs> he's kind of you know by progress. Point. Anyone said I stopped fucking with him at the Eminem map. <laughs> that Eminem episode that's, though that he did where he ranted I think about he's talking, fucking. He's talking about the. He's talking about Hollow the Don versus Joe Button. Um. Oh. Fair. Let me get, let me get, uh, I would say for me, um, listen, I agree, but also this weekend, besides hanging out with the, with the team, right at the bar, I also watched that whole Uber series that's on Netflix, the series about Uber, the app. And, um, I don't know, man. I like. I feel like sometimes, like you, you're right, holding with what you're saying. But sometimes, also, you fucking make people pay for some shit, and they're like, "Nah, it's cool. I'll pay for it twenty times." And like everybody pays for it, and everybody's kind of like, yeah, "I'm gonna sure, just why not? I'm gonna I'm gonna just it. be and like." Then next thing you know, you end up with Uber, right? Where it's just like, "Yo, everybody." It's just like unanimously like, yes, I'm right. in. I'm all I, bought in to the system. And you have a new like, system. We're talking. It is a huge difference between Uber, which changed the fucking game no, with taxis absolutely. and made our absolutely. lives cheaper, absolutely. and the There's Joe no, Budden saying, podcast. No, no. I'm <laughs> so, saying, like, I think you're... Look, well, that's I think like you're... Comparing, that's like comparing Kiss to, like, nah, Uber. Kiss, Kiss nah, cabs in I, New York and the Bronx. To like Uber, bro. Now nah, listen. That's what um, you just. This is, this is the thing, right? Um, <laughs> if his fans, <laughs> if his fans paid, and he won with the move, right? And if they're willing to do it again, then is it a bad move? You know what I mean? Man, like, I think that his reputation. I mean. Okay, for the converted, obviously is good, but I think given his entire strategy and everything he's done thus far, to do it unannounced, that's the shit where like deep down inside it breaks people's trust in your brand. Like that's the part. It's not what he did. It's that he did it unannounced and in a almost it's the type of it's shit that's gonna be brought up and hit pieces against them. One day you're gonna see the downfall of Joe Budden. And you'll see like the fucking T people doing their hour and forty five minute long that video, video comes essays. Out every six months. <laughs> but like I need for it to happen finally. No, but like when it when it like I'm not saying this is gonna destroy him, but like this is gonna come up in the hit piece videos forever. Because, like, it's just fodder for them. And in his world of talking shit, they talk shit back. My, but to your point, I do think that, like, his Patreon will retain a certain amount of people. I just think it's a strange way to get them in the door. You could just say, the next time this happens, it'll be like that. Don't be surprised. And then moving forward, do it. Yo, he's going to have moments again. This is not his last moment. 
He manages just, to have like, Nah, I feel like honestly, honestly, I'm gonna say some real shit people might dislike, but I think he thinks he's bigger than what he is. And he thinks he can like pull off, you know, Drake randomly dropping albums at a certain time and nobody knows about it, but they all download it type shit. And I just feel like he thinks he can do that. And this was that attempt. And, and that's just what I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel you on that. But uh, that was a fun topic. It's an interesting. Yo, let us know what you think, too. Because, like, topic of the week is would you, just us. Would you pay? Would you not care? Or would you care? Or would you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let us know what you or think. Or, like, if you're a, especially if you're a Joe Budden podcast fan who actually watches the show and are directly right. affected by this shit, like, you missed the I episode because it is. CC, CC's a fan. Yeah, Chris. I know he's been a, he's a Let, huge, yeah, let's huge see if you're watching, fan, CC. So. We'll see if you're really watching. See your comment if you're <laughs> not. <laughs> um, Good word. So um, I guess we move on to trailer of the week. Trailers. Yes, trailers. Man. Trailers of the week. Uh, progress anyone thinks me and Joe Button are fascists. You're a fascist. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Whoops, wrong one. Boom. I will not give up on myself. I will not give up on my dreams. I will make my life count. You're gonna get through this. It's who you are. I will make my life count. Only two years of high school. Well, I left to pursue a career in sales. Cut, cut. What is that, like steak knives? Yeah. Or um, it was other kinds of knives, too. Mm -hmm. Give me a shot, please. Don't embarrass me. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh. Oh. Right. Pleasure is mine. It's commissions that get you into paradise. Get a doctor to prescribe your drug. You know when we bill on a full dose script? What? 40 grand. A year? A month. On some level, I knew it was bullshit. It's a long odds lottery ticket buried under a thousand rejections. And you gotta have the grit and the balls to reach down and scratch it. There's nothing so inspiring as sheer desperation. We're not gonna make 100K this year. It's gonna be more like 600. <laughs> Work like your back's against the wall. Own your territory. Own your territory. Own a territory. If you don't grow, you die. Sales are flat. Sales are flat at 170 million a quarter. Like that! Use your crisis as your fire. You'd be amazed at what you're capable of. It's not your fault. You're not a bad person. I will not give up on myself. I will not give up on my dreams. I will make my life count. I will make my life count. Is it me or is he losing his shit? Hey! Get your shoes off! Get your shoes off! Yeah, is that another opioid crisis movie? Yeah, yeah. What happened? I was like, is that another one about like the opioid crisis and the people selling and all that shit? Yeah, I just think this one's more like focused on like kind of like the uberness of it, the Facebookness of it, right? right like right, the, right. the corporate side and the sales and like the one that I watched um, that was also on Netflix that was a series was I think more based on like the exploitation of the citizens and their addiction and their spiraling into addiction. This one looks like it's more focused on like the salespeople and the owner of the company uh, selling right. the, sell, the pills and shit. Um, yeah. Almost like Andy Garcia. Andy Garcia is a really good actor. I really like Andy Garcia. He's always yeah, I been like a really Andy good Garcia actor as well. Um, I, I like these Chris concepts, Evans. though. I like I like Emily Blunt. Um, well, that's like gonna be cool. Be a, a cool, cool flick, decent flick. October twenty seventh, which is um, Friday. Friday. Two days. Friday. <laughs> no, it's Friday. Hey, 
Ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin my broadcast today, I have something to say. In this time of darkness, of invading cities, I'm trying to remember. Light lasts forever. Darkness lasts, Darkness lasts not, not even, even for one second. When you turn on the light, I know that broadcasting could get me executed. But I will not be silenced. I hope you will tune in again tomorrow. When I was a child, I was trained to locate radio frequencies. The things that I've seen haunt me. The voice was my escape. You are going to find her. And you will kill this girl yourself. The Germans are close now. All the people of the world have become evil at the same time. Not all the people. We need to not draw attention to this house. Marie won't be safe. I will find your daughter. If you fail, she will die first. I think you know by now. You are sending messages that will help to win the war. We cannot give up to these monsters. France does not belong to them. Someone from our generation who thought if you talk reason, then maybe the insanity of this woman come to an end. I don't know how long I have, but I will remain here, where it all began. This is where it ends. No, you are out there. There is no escape. Important light is the light you cannot see. Hitler, the action movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like. It's a Hitler, the action movie. I mean, the director is uh, last name Levy, so you know what I mean. Um, nah, this is one of them the like is. resistance stories. Exactly. I think it's based on the French resistance. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Which, I, I, oh, which I've always kind of like. Um, I was joking. I just had I, to throw the joke in there. That's all. My bad, man. Yeah, just, nah, Mark Ruffalo's a uh, super solid actor. I fucking fuck with everything that he does for the most part. Um, that other dude, too. The 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 German uh, Nazi guy. The the older one. Is, it the, is he the Nazi guy or is he... I'm not sure, but he's from um, Hell on Wheels, and he's done a lot of these like Western America, like America in the uh, like 1700s Western type of movies and shit. And like, he's a really good actor too. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Great job, too. great job, great job, Flacco. You be knowing your shit, bro. Yeah, that's gonna be a series. The one with four is a movie. Ready? Don't hold back. <laughs> Not bad. <sighs> Unsheath it. Show me your blade. I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, that's enough. Did you also lose your backbone when you lost your title? You are a monster. <clears throat> that is the blue eyed samurai um movie that's coming. I think that they're trying to like their uh this movie is like their uh, an attempt at like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon type of uh, movie with anime. With anime. Oh shit! You know. But instead of it being like anime, like typical anime, it's more like artsy fartsy animation. You know what I mean? Uh, Sarah, you're on mute still. Um, my bad. I was saying right. <laughs> right. It definitely like has like more of a, like uh art piece feel to it. She I think it's probably gonna end up. Though. <laughs> she was. She was. She was I mean, he was wild disrespectful. I mean, is it? I don't know. Was that wrong? Because I'm like, damn, he just threw her when she kissed him and was like, ew, you're a monster. You know, that's, like, that's yeah. love taps. Oh. That's love taps. What happened? That's, I don't... What happened? That's all I'm saying. Oh, I, I you know, just like, said, yeah, 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 both no, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it like, Damn, like Shorty kissed him and he like, yo, get the fuck off me. You're a monster. Like and she's like, watch, I can fuck you up. So watch, I can fuck you up. I like that. That's the strangest when, when, trailer. When she it's not a trailer, it was like a clip. Oh. They already showed the trailer. Um he tricked us into watching a clip. Yeah, I was just like, was this is the strangest. It's interesting. Yeah. I don't know what's happening here. The, Do they like, like each other? The Do they not shit. like each other? Was that consensual? It seemed like they it wanted to fuck. The, 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 the clip was <clears throat> called Ronin, the Ronin and, and the Bride. Technically, so, she um, violated him, Holden. Technically. That's, that's what that I'm saying. She violated him. Yo, but it could, but, yeah, he, but she I mean, but you could also look at it like consent. she took her shot. She she, she, she took her shot in a in it. Yeah. So it's consent. like, what's I don't know. Like sometimes you kiss somebody and they're like, nah, I'm not consent. interested. And if you consent. ask beforehand, she'd be like, did you really just ask me that? That's not a good place to be. That kills the whole vibe. The vibe killer. I tell you this, I like that little scene when she was upside down and they like grazed faces and they showed like their lips were like two centimeters from each other and shit. I was like, that's some good animation, yo. That was some, that was some, it was the, their movements was really nice, fluid. I like that. So, that was yeah. well done. Pretty dope, pretty dope, pretty dope. November 3rd, Blue Eyes Samurai, yeah. The Bride right. and the Ronin, The Ronin and the Bride. Okay. So, right. and he's gonna okay. kick, and he's gonna, and he's gonna kick Shorty off of him and be like monster. <laughs> it really is about, oh, it really is about consent. But he was a little right. strong about his shit. All I'm saying is, no means no. No does mean no. Oh, Sarah sent a Spotify link. I confused the fuck out of me. No means no. What was it? GVD King? G GVD King. Oh. Yeah, it's pro. 
Robes on the guard king, draped like a Grecian statue. Black Adam, Italian marble, single tattoo. Earth bone scar, gorgeous, the aura glowing. African DNA, obsidian cosmic ocean. Step into new chapters, wonderment, crude laughter. Shit eating grins on their chins while we amuse, gracias. For the moments and the memories, thanks to the assholes for motivational energy. Cold steel, the craft work, stainless, edging out the lines, clean, calculated, ageless, refined hits, timeless, another flight high above the fray, seize the day, own the night. I'm from a different strata, mind over metadata, spirit over tangibles, planets move around the gala, filled with star children, placating demonoids, funneling their magic spells through music, it's just hollow noise, echoing like soda can, crush them, no recycle toys, refurbish rabbit's ass on the bubble, hemorrhoid, memo void, any affiliation with frenemies, split faces torn by jealousy, Gemini's, magnify this free speech, crimson dyed magenta, food for unborn minds like mothers to placenta, we are exotic venture, life at full potential. Omar victorious, Victoria on instrumentals. Cold steel, the craft work, stainless, edging out the lines, clean, calculated, ageless. Refined hits, timeless, another flight high above the fray, seize the day, own the night. Hot letters, projectile, dangerous, move from out the chamber, hammer slap, tameless. Wild ammo, raging, down on the ground, victorious, reload, pour another round. Nice. Shouts to Prolific One, Propane. No, it's not as smooth. Yeah. Shout out to the Propane, the bro. He has a, a dope project out. Hit a like on OG. that, Holden. What the fuck? Make sure you follow him on OG. Uh, OG, you hear me? You should on be IG. making that a habit, Holden. You should like everything that we play. Yeah. How are you gonna ask the people to like your videos when you're not liking videos? I like I like videos. I just forget. I you I told you I love you, girl. You would have thought. You would have thought I can't really love you, girl. You was a whore. I love her, she suck it, she love when I spend. And if that shit ready, I fuck it again. I headed the action, what's up with a friend? Let's make it a three, these bitches gonna send. I go for the win, that shit was a pleasure, we fucking again. I'm getting the wet, I'm taking a swim. I'm pushing the buttons, I'm making a. Who would've thought? I told you I love you, girl, you would've thought. Uh, you would've thought I can't really love you, girl, you was a whore. Girl, I can't do this no more. I'm trying to show you to the door. I'm not playing Cupid no more. I'm not being stupid no more. Don't fall in love, you met in the trap. She wanna spit on it, cause I rap. Girl, when you sit on it, make it clap. She do a split on it, bring it back. Is you gonna get on it or you cap? If I gotta spit on it, then it's whack. Who would have thought? I told you I love you, girl. You would have thought. Uh, you would have thought I can't really love you, girl. You was a whore. Who would have thought? I told you I love you, girl. You would have thought. Uh, you would have thought I can't really love you, girl. You was a whore. That was Henry Hennessy, Light Up. I just want to say, um, if you make fire music, I'm just going to play your shit week after week so I can pay, make sure I play all the songs I like. These are Henry all the songs. Hennessy's fire, that's why. These are, this is the third song from his project that like 
I really was like, when I heard the project, I was like, nah, I'm putting these in my playlist. Like, these are songs that I'm bumping on my own because I right. find them fire. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like the way um, that he just, like, let half the song be the beat. That's something, like, a lot of rappers, yeah. especially, like, like, they don't do. And, like, yeah, he just kind of, like, said what he had to say. And then you felt, like, the beat carried out of motion where the drums kind of kick in mm-hmm. later on to kind of even, like, add that little emphasis. I'm not personally sold on beat tags, whatever, but, like, otherwise, like, that shit was an interesting composition. Like, it's just, like, nah, yo, you don't really see people... Beat tags are really important nowadays. That shit is, like... People I, is, I, get I remember it. coming from an era where it was, like, it was frowned upon because it meant that you didn't pay for the beat, and now it's, like, if you paid for the beat, you better make sure that you got the producers tagging it. It's crazy. Right, right. I respect that shit, though. I, I like that song. Yeah, no, a lot. I'm never mad. I'm never mad at wherever things go. I love that that song. Um, I fuck with Henry Hennessy heavy, and that's just he's how got it he's I'm got one of them project. voices that like when Savage yeah. Project drops, I'm gonna be playing all my favorite songs week Coming after week. Soon. You know what I mean? And it just is what it is. Like, this is what I do. I'm just going to promote the shit that I really, you know, and and bump it out here for my yeah. people or people in the ME scene. For the people, the people, the people, people. Oh. Word. Holden, your canción. Yeah. Chris Crumb and myself's new joint. Mm-hmm. I see the, the I see the promo. Yo, shout out Aurora for the fucking cover. I really like that shit. Never had to hit the pavement and slide night. I will late nights trying to pokeball a vibe. All the secrets, no surprise. Most of us live in the sky. See, we are who we are, even when the night dies. Never had to hit the pavement. Slide night, I will late nights trying to poke all the vibe. All these secrets, no surprise. Most of us live in the sky. See, we are who we are, even when the night dies. I got back up on my bullshit and I ran a couple max. Kept it smooth, yeah, I cruise when it started running left. Different venues and rotation, you were chilling in the pack. I was blowing through the stash while y'all began to chat. Talking about loyalty and how you got each other's back. And I'm screaming deja vu, cause I know it's all cap. It's a shame, y'all the same, yet I'm still hoping for change. I'm deranged in my fucking brain, letting y'all lay claim. Self reflecting, that was my mistake. I was bug I saw more than my heart could take. I was selfish at the kickback i done overfill my plate now a fork's all in the road while i'm here gripping the blade all these blurry figures pretend like they're all amazed tip to tap me to what's happening and i'm quietly making waves mr nice guy almost snapped rewind that we saving face yeah we barely <coughs> got the surface but we now changing the pace yeah i'm coming for what's mine because i'm destined for my fate hit the, the pavement it's like night i will late nights nice. trying to poke you all the vibe all these secrets no surprise most of us live in the sky see we are who we are even when the night dies If I had to hit the pavement It's like night I will lay nights Trying to poke a vibe All these secrets No surprise Most of us live in the sky See we are who we are Even when the night dies Late nights got us moving We moving Late nights got us looping We grooving Drink right Get high like it's a movement Secrets of the night Trapped inside Left to illusions Which version of me You like best I'm too Closed off, then I'm too chill and failed the test. I'm not that impressive, I'm just chasing what's destined. This too commercial for the lack of interest. Lust is cool, but busting leaves us feeling a fool. Tell me what's the move, it's 2 a.m. we grooving. But tomorrow's gonna prove I'm nothing but a pawn that you're using in truth. My hormones don't hit me like they used to. It takes a lot to get me up, and you ain't worth getting caught. I need to focus more on dollars, these travel costs are adding up. And no, I can't bring you a number. But shorty, I can write you into the verse of a CC song Not even my own track, I ain't fuck with you like that The version of me you like is an internet character I'm feeling more like an unpaid actor than someone who wanna smash I'm thinking I'm gonna pass, this creepy shit never lasts Once upon a time, I'll probably fall in line Let you do your thing and create trauma in my life But now I'm getting older and my heart is getting colder Still debating therapy, find the brains that are bolder 
shoulder Oh, I know all about the tangled webs we weave All the subtext in secret silly speech Like, cause I can't remember things your pussy rep for me Like, maybe I'm a different being sorry, you a memory If I had to hit the pavement and slide night owl late nights Trying to pokeball a vibe, all these secrets, no surprise Most of us live in the sky, see we are who we are Even when the night dies If I had to hit the pavement and slide night owl late nights Trying to poke keep all the vibe All these secrets, no surprise Most of us live in the sky See we are who we are Even when the night dies When the night dies We, 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 we are who we are Who we are Who we are Who we Yeah I sent my pic to you, Holden. Oh, oh. I remember Sarah. I put. Oh, okay, my bad. The, I said that pic could be pro, next week. The it's prolific okay. one. Okay, my bad. Oh, yeah, that's see, right. That's right. If you want it, we can play it. Now, I don't, I don't, it's, it's up to you. We... Save it for next week. That way, we don't, yeah, don't got to put, put it under her name. Yeah, I just want to give a quick shout out to. To the homie Merker Miyagi for doing all the mixing and the mastering and all that on the joint too. So shout out him for uh hey, for that. Shout out Merker Miyagi, Brody. My guy. Yeah. My motherfucking guy. Time to say good. Oh night. shit, no, Patreon video. Oh, no, what are we doing with our weeks? Well Last before week, we go, please uh, yeah, let but... you know to subscribe. To Patreon video Patreon. first. All right, let's do that. I'll reshare the screen. Patreon. Boom. We Subscribe to Patreon. The other Patreon Welcome video back. Bro. It's your boy, the ah. podcast. I would like to be able to switch between videos, between this one and the other. Oh, I'll get a look into that shit. What happened? I'll look into that shit. <clears throat> Talk to you about right. one of our special packages in the Patreon. We're here to talk about the whole Patreon. All right, before we get to the levels, I wanted to, you know, break down who we are, what we do. We make the perspective show. This is our interview series where we talk to creative professionals about their journey, teaching us all new perspectives about life. On top of that, we have our extra show, our perspectives. We go live and we stream our thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on the news that just happened. And we got a whole new show that we cook in after. We're going to tell the Patreons first, so extra little reason to sign up for that. I know you're watching and going, but hold it. How much it costs, what are we going to get, all that good stuff, but let me break that down for you. So for $5 a month, you can become a level one perspective. This gives you access to our private Discord and gives you special Patreon exclusive content. A level two perspective costs $10 a month, gives you the same stuff as level one that's going to apply to all the levels. And it gives you early access to all of our main episodes plus special behind the scenes content like what happened. Holden has a lighter. Holden doesn't have a lighter. Holden has I will a take lighter. Holden, you have a lighter, Holden? I've been, I've been dying for this Holden. nigga to get robbed in New Holden, York. you have a lighter? I'm going to be the nigga to rob him, okay? <laughs> that's why you better stay the fuck out of this, Holden. Let me tell you something. Holden, answer the fucking question. You have the lighter, Holden? Don't you talk to my Don't white boy like that, all you right? That He's my that? white boy. You Only I it. talk to him Reverse. like that. So there's a whole what thing there you can watch if you join the Patreon. That's part of a whole thing. into the mix. Where every couple of months in a room, somebody fly a trip, make it real nice. A level four perspective comes to at $100 a month, and this is where it gets special. You become the star of a perspective episode. Ah, Spend a whole year learning about you, introduce something with the same quality as everything we give to all of our guests. Finally, we have the level five perspective. This is a big one. It's a guided tour of either New York City. Montreal with a real New Yorker and a real Montrealer. You get to have experience and be live in Times Square. Someone who can get you through it, saving money and making sure you have the best time possible. We're going to take you to each of our respective cities. You can pick the one you want to go to. And we're going to make sure you have an incredible time. 
All terms and conditions are on the Patreon. You can find patreon.com slash perspective. Link in description. We appreciate you so much. And we're so glad that you want to join our community. Looking forward to chatting with you in your squad. Live long and prosper, everyone. Good to see you. Subscribe! Subscribe! Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Ah, so yeah, what are y'all doing uh, this my upcoming neighbor, week? My neighbor's in the hallway making noise and shit. My fault. Um, I'm going to Fright Fest in Jersey. I'm going to pop wild shrooms. I'm going to drink shroom tea. Um... Uh, I forgot what else I have planned. Oh, the studio with Sarah and Penn on Wednesday. Um, man, plans, plans, plans. Good time. Hey. I got a studio. I got work. I got I got stuff. Y'all started Stop. talking about it. Now I feel more stressed out. And my allergies are acting up. So, yeah, there's that. Don't get stressed. Don't be stressed out. Studio's a beautiful problem. But, gentlemen, this has been an amazing evening. I have shared with you. Mm-hmm. I look forward Hold to it. our studio session, uh, Flacco. I look mm-hmm. old, I, 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 I look. I look forward to next Monday. Sour. Oh no! Okay, sorry. Yeah no. Okay. Uh, yeah no. Tomorrow I'm going to this um for thing this networking event where they're gonna be talking about grants and stuff. So I thought that would be a nifty use of time. Um, well, thanks. Uh, otherwise. I don't really know. Oh, next weekend we're doing a music video, weather permitting. We're going to go to the botanical gardens and go shoot with nature what? and fly. Why would you shoot with nature when the winter got here? Not nah, because fall and, time and with the before. trees. <laughs> no, hold up, hold fall up. Time with fall the trees. time with yeah, the yeah, trees. Fall. Yo, that's I mean, gorgeous. And then they also got better, at the you night time. Getting the night, you better get no, some nice I, um, drone footage. Cause that's I don't know where if we the have a drone. Comes in. Yeah, that's, but, like, that's where the nice comes in. Gonna the, the, be I don't know if we can get a drone. Yeah. We just roll them with what we got. Ooh. But like, really, I also because this is like light festival thing, and it's really cool that they throw there. Like, it's gonna be lit visuals in terms of just like capturing a Montreal staple at the same time, right? Like, so I'm not necessarily aiming for a perfect video. I'm just aiming to show off something cool for my city. Well, tight because it kind of ties into the song as well, being around nature and. You know, taking a break from fucking life and shit, and uh, so that we're gonna do. And then I'm, sh- I think there's Halloween stuff starting, but I don't know what we're doing. Um, so far, there's no plans. Like Bonnie has a costume for daytime, but then like when we, when I put her to the test of costume party, she's like, I don't really know if I want to go out, and I'm like, I guess we're not doing the costume party thing. Fair, but uh, otherwise, yeah, that's the week figuring out other stuff but yeah um so yeah thank y'all for watching appreciate y'all being here with us uh it's real cool of you make sure to subscribe on the patreon or subscribe, subscribe on the youtube yo if you're watching on twitch if you're watching on twitch and you have amazon prime you can subscribe for free on twitch that's cool too and uh yeah we appreciate you being here let us let us know uh what you want us to talk about next week and hit up Flacco on the cash app and he'll be your best friend all of our links and stuff are in the description along with everything else we talked about in this episode so y'all live long and prosper everyone say bye pen poison pen says goodbye say goodbye pen say bye to the mic say bye (laughs) Alright. <laughs>